Welcome back to the class on human resources management. Uh, I am Aradhana Malik. I have been helping you with this course. Let us get to today we will talk about organized labor. Okay. Some sources, uh, book by Gilmore and Williams, Gomez Media, Balkan and Cardi. Today we will talk about organized labor. Now, what what is organized labor? Organized labor means when the workforce of an organization is gets together collectively and uh, tries to put forth its needs and requirements and, and tries to ensure the welfare of its members uh, through bargaining, through discussions with the top management. Some forms of organized labor are unions. A union is an organization that represents employees interests to management on issues such as wages, work hours and working conditions. These are some of the core issues that unions talk about. If a union is not talking about these issues, if they are not addressing these issues that means they are up to some, I mean they are, they are uh, you know this is, this is uh, something that is very, very uh, essential for them. So, this is the main reason why people get together and form unions. Union dues are the fees that you pay to become a member to ensure the administration to take care of small expenses incurred by unions in organizing meetings etcetera. So, for the services that they provide you pay a fee to them union dues are collected and uh, I am not sure if this is applicable to all unions in India, but then it is a done thing. So, there is nothing strange about a union collecting some minimal fees from its members. When do employees join unions? Employees join unions when they are dissatisfied with certain aspects of their jobs. Obviously, if a job, if an organization is taking care of its employees, the employees do not need to get together and go as a collective, go as a group to the management to request them for some basic needs. It is only when they are dissatisfied, when things are not going as they should that people decide to get to and when their voice is not being heard by their immediate super superiors and people above them, do they join unions, do they join make groups and go as a collective body to, to, to seek the needs that they desire. Okay, or to fulfill the needs that they have. Uh, people join unions when they feel they lack influence with management to make the needed changes. Now, if people are dissatisfied, they want some change to come about in the organization. So, uh, people's needs may be heard, but for some reason no action is being taken on their voicing of these needs. That is when the employees get together and go and try and get some action taken on their communication of their needs. When we talk about change, we talk about a shift from the status quo, we, sh we talk about a shift from the current situation. So, when we talk about making changes, hmm, employees who lack influence with management to make the necessary changes. You request your boss to do something, you request your boss for leave, you request your boss for some flexibility. Boss says, yes, I understand, but I cannot do anything about it because the system is such. Now, when employees go together as a collective body, the management is forced to listen to them. The management is forced to take care of them and make the necessary changes. Okay. Employees join unions when they see unionization as a solution to their problems. When people have problems, when number of people have similar problems that can be categorized and they want these problems to be taken care of and people are not acting on their requests, people are not taking care of their needs, their basic needs are not being fulfilled that is when they go and join unions and that is when they get you know go as a collective body and that is when, when they see it as a last resort. Nobody wants to join a group that is seen as a group that is working against or in competition with the organization. It is only when they feel they have lost 
their voice or when they feel that they are not being heard that they decide to go and join unions. Okay. Some Indian laws related to in industrial relations and unionization can be found on this page. So, let us see here, I will just show you. Okay. So, we have various laws related to industrial relations, we have various laws that talk about uh, how the relationship or uh, between the employees, the employee bodies and the organization and the administrative bodies in the organization should be. So, there are various laws in India, hmm. we have the trade unions act, we have the trade unions amendments. The, there are some amendments to this act that were made in 2001. This document can be found on the official website of the Ministry of Labor and Employment, Government of India. Again, we have these Industrial uh, Employment Standing Orders Act and the rules. We have Industrial Disputes Act, we have the Plantation Labor Act. So, these are some standard rules and policies or uh, laws that govern how the relationship between these employee bodies, these collective bodies of employees and the organization, the administrative bodies of the organization should be maintained. Okay, labor relations, labor relations refer to, this is a term that refers to the, the overall relationship between the organizations administrative body and the organizations the body of the organizations workforce. So, people who actually do the jobs that are required to be done and people who ensure the implementation of rules, they ensure that the jobs are done the right way. Administrators are people who look at the implementation of rules and policies in an organization. So, they make sure the, they take care of the how of jobs. Okay. So, this is the, the, the labor relations means we are talking about the connect between the people who actually do the jobs and people who ensure that people who are doing their jobs are doing them right and within the, 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 the boundaries of the rules and policies of the organization and the law of the land. We then uh, some ways of looking at labor relations, we have labor relations strategy. A company's labor relations strategy is its management's overall plan for dealing with unions. So, organizations come up with their strategies, they come up with their ideas, they come up with their with ways of dealing with collective bodies of employees and that is known as the labor relations strategy. How do we view unions? as an organization, do we want them there, do we not want them there, if we want them there, how much of input do we want from them, all of this is covered in the labor relations strategy. Union acceptance strategy is when the management chooses to view the union as its employees legitimate representative and accepts collective bargaining as an appropriate mechanism for establishing workplace rules. So, we assume that the unions will be there in the organization. How much? I mean, we accept them as a part of the organization's design. Hmm. We will have an administrative body and we will have unions who are looking after the welfare of the organizations. So, of the specific organization. So, when we, if we have, if our strategy is to accept unions as an integral part of the organization, then we build our human resources strategy around the union acceptance, belief of accepting unions. Hmm. So, we say, okay, if the, if there is already a body in place that is working for the welfare of the employees and that is looking at things from the perspective of the employees, we can always bank on their support to do whatever we need to do in order to ensure the welfare of our employees. So, we integrate the union and make it an integral part of the organization, knowing fully well that they can question the decisions taken by the organization also at some point. <coughs> A 
again I will give you these slides, you do not need to you know try to read whatever is written here on this slide, but this is an example of a union acceptance strategy. How is this strategy written down in the form of a policy or in the form of a document of the organization? Whenever you have time, this, this is directly taken from this, this book by Gomez Mejia, Balkan and Cardi and it is a very nice way of, of uh, you know informing the employees in the organization that we understand and accept that a union is in place and we will do whatever we can knowing that it is going to be a part of our organization. So, you know there is there is some sort of mutual support involved in this case. Whenever you get the slides please go through the details of this strategy, but you do not need to bother about pausing your screens and reading it on the screen. It is in smaller font I wanted to get the whole thing on one slide in one place. So, you would know that something like this exists. Okay. Union avoidance strategy is another aspect of labor relations strategy. We have the you know union acceptance means we accept unions as an integral part of the organizational setup. When we say union avoidance strategy, we choose we select a union avoidance strategy when we fear that the union will have a disruptive influence on our employees or fear losing control of our workers to a union. So, we are not sure that we are doing the right thing or when we feel that we are, our workers do not listen to us that much and if a union is formed there could be a strike, they could go against the organization, they could put unnecessary pressure on the organization because we ourselves are not strong enough. That is the time when an organization might decide to avoid unions altogether, but that is a very tricky situation. That is a very tricky situation because in principle a union helps look after the employees interests. In principle ideally a union does not work against the organization, its primary purpose is to support the organization that the employees are working for through ensuring the welfare of the employees who are working for the organization. So, it acts as a, a, a champion, the body acts as a champion for the employee interests, but its main goal is not to fight the organization, its main goal is to ensure a balance, fair treatment of employees within the organization. When we, when we decide upon a union avoidance strategy, we could have two, we could do it in two ways. We could either do it by through union substitution or we could do it through union suppression. Okay. Union substitution approach to union avoidance strategy is also known as the proactive human resource management approach. When we talk about a union substitution strategy, we say okay, we are scared of unions, but we would not tell the unions that we are scared of them. Since the primary purpose of having a union is to protect the interests of the employees, we will build it within our policies to ensure we will build systems and and procedures within our existing framework to ensure that the employees are looked after as well as possible. So, they do not feel the need to join a union, they do not feel the need to even form a union because they are so happy with the way that the organization is treating them. Hmm. Like we said in the beginning of this presentation, in the beginning of this, this lecture that people decide to join a union when they are dissatisfied as an organization committed to ensuring the welfare of our employees, we do not give them a chance to be dissatisfied. We take care of their needs better than they expect us to, so they do not feel the need to join a union, they do not feel the need to form a union. This is called the union substitution approach to union avoidance strategy. Hmm. Management becomes so responsive to employees needs that it removes the incentive for unionization. Why should anyone join another organization? Right? Now, some representative policies that help us do this are we have job security policies. We say ok, your job will be protected. We give our employees this 
security, this sense of security about their jobs. We build it in our systems to have you know half time off, paid vacations, uh, flexi time. So, people do not feel that they will they do not fear that they will lose their job if in case of a real emergency they are not able to come to work for several days on end or maybe a longer period of time. We build it into the policy framework, we build it into our systems into the way we do our things that their jobs are ensured and that is one big incentive for people to not form a union. Then the other way we can do it is promoting from within instead of getting people from outside the organization to supervise the employees, we have the system of promotions from within. A pool of employees is there when the position above them comes open, these one of the these people the most deserving candidate is promoted and put into that senior position. So, people do not want to join a union, they know that if they work hard enough everybody could have an equal chance of becoming a senior uh, admin, senior uh, employee of the organization. Then we have profit sharing and employee stock ownership plans. What is profit sharing? We have talked about this when we talked about employee benefits. The organization shares a part of whatever it makes with the organization, with the employees. Stock ownership plans have a risk there is a risk involved in employee stock ownership plans. If the stocks go down, if the value goes down, you end up losing money. But if the value of the stocks goes up and you decide to sell your stocks, you end up making a lot of money. So, it is like having a part of the organization. You own a very tiny fraction of the organization, so it is yours. So, you are invested in the organization. You work very, very hard to make the organization succeed because you will end up getting a part of the profit, you will end up getting a, 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 a piece of the pie that is generated uh, because the organization is making a lot of money. So, that is another incentive for people to not join a union, everything is fair game and they see these many profits, you know this is, this is the profit that the organization has made, this is my share and I am going to get my fair share. So, they do not feel the need to join a union, they feel satisfied in how the organization is treating them. High involvement management practices that solicit employee input into decisions. Many times we as employees feel that the decisions are made at some higher level and are imposed on us. Many times in many organizations employees feel that. However, in order to avoid unionization, it is always a good idea to solicit employee feedback, to solicit employee inputs on decisions, especially on decisions that are going to affect them and then include this feedback and make it a part of the decision making process. Include their inputs in forming, in making decisions that affect them. When employees know that their feedback is being actively genuinely considered, then they feel uh, respected, they feel valued by the organization and they do not want to, they do not feel the need to join a union. Open door policies and grievance procedures that try to give workers the same sense of empowerment that they would have under a union contract. If an organization looks after the welfare of the employees, I know I am repeating myself, but I am saying this again and again. If the organization ensures that any time they have a grievance, any time they feel that they have not been treated fairly, they are able to go up the ladder, they are able to go up the hierarchy and approach people who will be able to help them, which is something that the union would do for them, then they do not feel the need to join a union. There is an open door policy, anybody can walk into anyone's office at any point of time. If employees feel that, then they do not feel the need to join a union, they do not feel the need to, to you know go into another body outside of their organization, because they know that the organization is accepting them as part of the organization's family. 
team you are part of one big family that is the organization and you can you can talk to your superiors anytime and you will be heard when you have that assurance you don't want to join a union the other uh, strategy of avoiding unions is the union suppression approach management uses the union suppression approach when it wants to avoid unionization at all costs and does not make any pretext of trying to do the right thing for its employees union suppression approach refers to you doing everything in your capacity to stop the formation of unions an organization is so scared of unionization that it does everything in its power to stop the formation of unions so it could have policies like you can't collect you know more than 10 more than 5 people cannot be sitting in one place at the same time more than 4 employees cannot go out to have their lunch at the same time so you stagger things you do not give employees a chance to get together during their office hours and a lot of employees don't want to do this outside of office hours because they have their family responsibilities so you stagger their lunch times you don't have common areas where they can stand and talk to each other you monitor their emails you make it known to them that the land connections will be monitored and even even a whiff of any unionization any collective activity is immediately snubbed you don't have parties you don't have get togethers you don't have meetings so that people don't get a chance to get together and talk you try everything in your capacity to stop the formation of unions okay so this is called the union suppression strategy now one big risk of this is when people know that their basic right basic human right of talking to of connecting with others who are of the same opinion as they are other like minded individuals is being suppressed then they might revolt this strategy has a very high chance of backfiring union substitution strategy on the other hand is a very nice strategy of keeping your employees happy and avoiding the formation of unions because unions if they get they are formed with the sole purpose of creating trouble which is in very rare cases but it has been known to happen in that case of course you can't do anything but and they they can be they can be suppressed very easily through legal measures but otherwise if you keep your employees happy they don't feel the need to get together and you know go i mean stop their work which they enjoy and go and uh, you know go against the organization or go as a collective body to the organization to argue for their needs if they don't have any impending needs uh, from or or if they don't have any they are not dissatisfied in any manner then they will not go and join a union okay how do you manage the labor relations process you can manage the labor relations process through three different methods you could do this through union organizing you could do this through collective bargaining and you could do this through contract administration we will deal with these three in the next lecture thank you